give us a, an update on Ty and Rob and Johnny and Andy Murray? Uh, Ty Byrne or Ty Fuller? Ty. Ty Byrne, um, I think, has been released. He's, he's headed in for an operation today. Um, and I guess the, um, yeah, the kind of high ankle issue, which is the syndesmosis, which is going to be anything between 10 and 12 weeks um, out of action. So, yeah, it's, it's quite a common operation these days and, and it's a procedure which a lot of players have had to go through. So. Hopefully, uh, you know, the operation goes well and he's, he's back up and running and ready to go in about 10 or 12 weeks. And then Johnny and Rob on the weekend? Um, as in Rob Herring? Yeah, <laughs> nasty blow. Uh, just he's, he's um, you know, he's sort of, he'll be following a return to, to play protocol and, and um, he's, in, he's in good form today. Uh, a little bit sore, but as, as expected. Uh, and Johnny is, is already back into rehab and, and, and working um, with the guys um, to you know, to get himself back up to up to speed uh, to, to train next week. That's the plan. You hope that to be fit for the match? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously Rob will come under the the return to contact and play protocols, which we which he obviously has to pass to to become fit and available for selection, but. But Johnny, um, Johnny is is uh, like other players who have, who have little niggles. That he's just trying to put himself in a position to, to be ready to go on Monday. So, how much of the, the losses of Ty Byrne and uh, how well are you set to compensate for that? Ty's been phenomenal, hasn't he, over the last couple of seasons? Uh, but like we've already had to do uh, during this championship, um, you know, we lost players before the game against Wales and, and you know, we've had to adapt. I think that's the testament to the squad and to to the work that the players have put in that even those guys who might not expect to be involved come in, they step in and the, the standard and the performance doesn't drop. So um, you know, it's really unfortunate that we've, we've lost Ty but we're very fortunate with the stocks that we have available to us uh, in, in his position and um, like I say, other, other players have have done that. They stepped in, and, and you know, the, the performance hasn't dipped. So, I guess that's um, as part and parcel of the, the game. Uh, World Cup, you could be without a player for a few weeks, and, and we might keep hold of a player, but someone else has got to step in. And, and I guess um, having the ability to to deepen our our experience in the squad and, and you know playing in big games is. Is part and parcel of us um, being the best we can be, whether it's, you know, it's the best 33 in a World Cup, uh, or you know we might have to dig deeper to 40, 45 players, and 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 that's that's the kind of, I guess the the mentality was a couple of years ago to make sure that we had more than just 30, 31, 32 players, 33 players available that we 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 certainly have have drilled down into into players underneath those and, and we feel like we're much better placed to lose someone like Tyg and, and not lose performance in players who come in. Tyg Furlong said kind of early in January he was hopeful of making that Wales game. Did he have a setback and is he looking likely to feature in this situation? Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, two things, yeah. He, he he's I guess he's he's um he's he had awareness of of his calf and and, and how that was Responding, um, and he's he's in a really good place. But but you know he knows his own body and understands how that works. And um, you know, we're very hopeful, and I think so is he that he's in, will be involved at some point during the Six Nations. But but it's a sort of injury, uh, like a lot of those soft tissues that you you want to make sure you don't get wrong. Uh, you want to make sure you get it right, and they feel like they've got enough in the in the bank in terms of exposure to. To the sort of high intensity of, of the game, and, and how can we do that? We can we can do that as much as we can in, in terms of training, but at some point he'll have to expose himself to to a game, and that you know hopefully that'll be over the next few weeks. Sorry, we can do the full version. Ian Henshaw, Gibbs Park, are they around camp now? Or, or yeah, yeah, they're all around. Um, they're sort of dipping in and out of doing their rehab and and uh, sort of I guess t keeping on top of their own individual work um, along with um, staying connected to the group and, and uh, you know, hopeful that, that they'll all come back into contention over the next couple of weeks. Uh, Simon, just picking up on the point about players feeling 
in, like you look at someone like Fiddy Beenham or Shukutovsky or Tom Kuhn <coughs> on, so many players are slipping in seamlessly and the performance isn't dropping. What are you working on with the players to have them primed to step up and perform so well? Um, I, I, th I think the players take a massive part of the responsibility to make sure they know what they need to do. Uh, you know, Finlay's a great example, isn't he, that, that maybe he didn't expect to start the Six Nations if, if Tiger had been fit, but he's stepped up and he's delivered in his, in his kind of essentials of his scrum and his line-out work, but then in terms of what he's done around the park, he's, you know, he's been exceptional. Um, you know, the more time we can spend with the players, the more exposure they have to what we're trying to do, and it's not massively different to, to what the provinces are doing. So there's plenty of continuity, I think, in terms of what we're doing and what they're doing in the provinces. Um, I guess the game is slightly quicker at international level. Um, they have little less time to to make decisions. You know, we'll challenge them on making good decisions, and 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 um, I guess being being as effective and as accurate as they can be. Uh, in those decision making, uh, whether it be defending or attacking, but the players have m massively bought into taking responsibility, so that if they are called upon, that they're ready. And and, and I guess they also know that if they don't take that opportunity, then at the moment we have such strength and depth that there's players who are ready to go and step into their shoes, and and that drives competition. But it massively drives standards, and it drives continuity, and it drives consistency of performance. So I think there's a number of things that go along with players who who step in, and it's not filling in because they're they're ready and they're and they're good to go, and they they don't allow the the quality or the standard of the group to drop when they when they do come in, and then it becomes harder for that player that didn't make it to come and and, and get rid of him. You know, so that's. That's great for in, sort of for our competition for places and and uh, selection. It makes it harder for us to select uh, because we've got more players to choose from. Oh, and just in relation to Hooker, obviously with Rob Herring's uh, position, uh, what's the position with Dan Sheehan? Uh, Dan again is is one that's you know, coming back to to recovery and and we're hoping that he's available next week. Um, so we yeah we we pulled Tom Stewart in the back end of last week. Uh, partly because we were we were unsure a little bit around the other guys, so yeah, it's you know, again we're probably pretty fortunate we have we have uh, a number of very good hookers, um, hookers that have missed out on selection as well. Uh, but yeah, there's 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 real confidence that um, the three of the hookers that are available will be available for selection next week, uh, and, and that's Dan, uh, Ronan, and, and Rob all together. There's a lot, lot made of the ball in place, that's uh, against France and against Ireland, inspecting a little bit, but um, has that been something you as a group have discussed, trying to, I guess, clearly the conditioning of the team is, is working, and having ball in play for as long a period as possible is, is a positive for this Irish team? Yeah, I, I don't think it's something that we've massively focused on, I think we, we feel we can, um, we can not just survive but thrive when it's it, it goes more than three or four, five, six phases and, and we have to to outwork a team. Um, I guess the you know, the nature of the game sometimes when a, when neither side kicks kicks out, they, they you know they keep the ball in play a little bit longer. Um, you know, there wasn't a huge amount of error and if there was error, um, you know, uh, both sides wanted to play and, and, and didn't look to to try and slow the game down, which maybe inevitably ends in having to have a set piece, uh, potentially a scrum off the back of a knock on. Um, so I think there was there was two sides who were prepared to to play at high intensity and and keep the ball in play, and and you know it, it certainly it suited our lads. You know they were they were blowing and they were. They were work incredibly hard, um, and and it is reasonably high, uh, but it's something that that I think is just the nature of the game at the moment. Um, there's a lot of games are, are sort of getting to that 40 minute mark, and you know it, it's not something that we massively discuss or or um, have have a huge amount of focus on. But understanding that the players feel comfortable and they can compete and they can really thrive in that space is is great because. You know, there is a big difference between 40 and 46 minutes, you know, and, and it may not seem a lot, but 
I guess at the intensity that the game is played at, then it, it, it can have an impact, certainly laterally in the game when, when people start to fatigue a little bit. Yeah. Might you question Mark's previous view of whether Ireland could compete with the physicality of bigger teams? Now we France and South Africa in the last three months. So do you feel that any of those concerns are now just out? Um, yeah, I, I think that's that's just outside chat and and, and um, opinion, which which really, you know, we we have to. You know, we have to, I guess, uh, put that to one side a bit and, and work out how we're going to beat a team. Um, whatever attributes they have as a team, what st what strengths they have, we need to make sure that what we try and do is is about our standards and and quality of our team, not so much about what what the opposition have. Obviously, the the um, you know, the French and and South Africans have have large humans that that can. Can do some damage, uh, ball in hand. You know, we, we we dropped off too many tackles against France. We we weren't as effective in our in our collision winning, uh, certainly um, in our in our tackle game. But um, you know, I don't think that that didn't you know that didn't come to to bite us uh, in terms of the physicality. So I don't think it's something that we speak a huge amount about. You know, we, we talk about. Making sure that we we work harder than them and we're smarter than them and and ultimately we're um, we're more effective and more accurate in what we do and, and if, if we do that then you know you're you're still going to come under pressure against big teams but uh, you know you feel like you're going to be more effective as well if you get those things right so more focus on ourselves I guess and not worry too much about what uh, the outside opinion is around us as a team and and who might causes trouble and who who doesn't